Hello, thank you for coming out today to our Student Journalism 101 workshop um, uh, held by the Hart House Literary and Library Committee. I'm Matthew, I am a co-chair of the Hart House Literary Library Committee, and I'm very excited to uh, bring to you um, several editors from across U of T who are here to talk to you about student journalism and how to get involved um, and the basics of becoming a student journalist. Um, before we begin this event, um, I would like to do a land acknowledgement. Uh, there we go. Um, <laughs> uh, before we begin, uh, I would like to acknowledge the land on which Hart House in, in the University of Toronto operates. For thousands of years, it has been the traditional land of the Huron-Wendat, the Seneca, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit River. Today, this meeting place is still home to many Indigenous people across Turtle I from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land. Uh, and if you are coming in from uh, anywhere from not around the GTA, I encourage you also to reflect uh, a moment of the Indigenous peoples from the land that you now are occupying and are working on and be thankful uh, and grateful for those people. Uh, so a quick rundown of the event schedule today. We'll be having presentations from our three publications. Uh, then we'll be going into a panel discussion uh, where I'll be asking uh, the editor's questions, uh, and it will be an opportunity for you to ask questions as well. Uh, and then we'll have a quick writing prompt at the end, uh, and you'll have opportunity to uh, hear how the editors would approach the prompt. Uh, you'll have the opportunity to, to write an article, and hopefully, if you would like, have an opportunity to send it in and get it reviewed. Um, so before we go any further, um, I welcome the uh, editors to introduce themselves really quickly. Hi everyone, I'm Paula. I'm the Editor-in-Chief at The Medium this year. Hello, I'm Ali. I'm the Managing Editor for The Medium this year. Hi, I'm Megan. I'm the Senior Copy Editor from The Varsity. Hi, I'm Mila. I'm the co-editor-in-chief of Trinity Times. Perfect. So without further ado, let's just jump right into our presentations. Uh, first, we will have the medium. So the medium is the independent student newspaper at the University of Toronto, Mississauga. Um, we publish a new issue every Monday. Um, we're now printing at a reduced bi-weekly schedule, um, so you can also find us on stands every other week. Um, our paper consists of five sections, news, comment, arts, sports, and health, and features. Um, and I'm just going to run through each of them really quickly. Um, so in the news section, we cover the daily campus news, um, coverage of local events, public transit, campus committee meetings. Um, we're just dedicated to informing the student body and holding U of T institutions accountable. Um, an ideal news article follows the inverted pyramid structure um, where the main point of the story is kind of explained at the beginning, the who, where, what, how, and when, um, and then branches out into further details as the article goes on. Um, and all news articles are based in fact and are objective. Um, moving on to the comment section, um, it consists of opinion editorials, um, letters to the editor and letters from the editor. Um, in this section, we're dedicated to uplifting and amplifying your perspectives and opinions on topics um, and issues relating to student life and the world in which we live. Um, in the art section, we focus on exhibit reviews, film and television roundups, interviews with artists, directors and curators. Um, in the sports and health section, we have, it's been challenging without a sports season this year, um, but we have, we focus on research-based health articles and um, coverage of the athletics department. Um, and in features, it's basically all the topics that aren't covered in the other sections. Um, we have long form articles um, and they center around research and interviews, um, kind of a deep dive into, into news stories or uh, stories that, that need a broader scope um, in coverage. So those are just kind of briefly what we cover in the paper. Um, I also wanted to go over our weekly process. 
Um, so you kind of know what happens behind the scenes and what you're going to get into if you decide to volunteer. Um, so on Sunday night, our section editors will be sending out um, a mass pitch email to all our writers. Um, so usually they'll contain about five to seven pitches. Um, and then you'll just email the writer or the editor back with uh, which topic you're interested in writing on. Um, they're usually first come first serve. The writer will get or the editor will get back to you on Sunday night or Monday morning. Um, and then Monday through Thursday, you're going to be corresponding with your editor um, and writing the article. Um, we're, we're always checking our emails. So we're definitely there for you throughout the week if you need us. Um, but yeah, you'll have Monday through Thursday to be writing. Thursday night is the deadline um, for uh, submission. So you'll email the article back to your editor and then the editor will go in that night and read your piece and then get back to you if they need you to fix anything up. Then Friday through Saturday is when the editorial team goes through every article. So all articles go through the section editors, copy editors, and Allie and myself. Um, so each article goes through four rounds of editing, which is why deadlines are very important for us. Um, and then on Sunday is, Sunday's our production day. Um, so we put together the entire newspaper, our design editor and our photo editor go in um, to lay out the paper. Um, and yeah, and then we get everything up on our website on Sunday night. We also do our editorial meetings on Sunday as well um, to kind of figure out what we're gonna be covering the next week. So that's kind of our weekly process at the Medium. Um, I just wanted to go over a few more kind of advice and, and skills that uh, we look for in our student journalists. Um, the main advice I think that we came up with was to prioritize deadlines and pitch us what you're interested in. Um, our, our editors spend a lot of time uh, looking or looking online and looking through uh, in, uh, campus postings on topics to cover, um, but we're very interested and would love for you to pitch us article ideas as well. Um, so whatever piques your interest, there's definitely something for you here. So just let us know. Um, and through email, um, all our emails are on the website. Um, and the deadline part, um, like I mentioned, uh, I think this whole industry is kind of based on timeliness and punctuality. So um, we really emphasize deadlines. If you don't meet a deadline, we're going to be, we're going to be trying to be accommodating, um, but we are on a deadline too. Uh, we need to send our paper to the printers on Sunday night um, and we publish on Monday morning. So deadlines are very important for us. Um, kind of the skills that we look for in our student journalists um, include strong writing slash editing background. Um, so if you've taken any professional writing classes or, or any of your humanities classes, um, if writing essays is something that you're passionate about and interested in, um, you should definitely try writing for us. Um, punctuality, like I mentioned, is also an asset that we look for, um, and also interpersonal skills. We're always communicating through email, um, and so we look for that aspect as well. Um, and lastly, kind of a common mistake or a biggest mistake uh, that we think student journalists encounter is thinking that we're students first. We are journalists as well. Um, we're learning and we're young, um, but we're also writers and reporters too. So I think that what we want you guys to remember if you write for us um, is that we are real reporters too. Um, so treat the work we do as professional um, and understand kind of the gravity of our work. Um, so I hope I covered everything. Ali, if you want to jump in and say anything as well. That was incredible. You covered everything. <laughs> okay, cool. That's all from us. Thank, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, next, I believe we have uh, the varsity. Hi, okay. Um, my name is Megan. Um, I, as I said, I'm a senior copywriter in the varsity. Um, so the varsity, we are UFC's tri-campus tri newspaper. Um, we're 140 years old, and that's the varsity skill. Um, <laughs> so as senior copy editor, um, what I do is basically, there's three parts. I go through and I edit everything after it's been through previous rounds of editing. I do substantive editing on articles, and then I run all the copy editing and fact checking of the paper. So everything goes through rigorous fact checking. Um, if it can't be verified, it's cut or sent back. And then I go through and I proofread everything with design. Um, so our 
editorial process is kind of similar to the medium and it's kind of different in a couple ways. Um, so we have seven sections. Um, so we have news, comment, business, features, arts, sports, and science. And then we also have other departments too. So we have copy editing, design, illustrations, video, and photo. Um, and you don't need any experience to go into any of those. We will happily train you. We have guides, we have workshops. Um, you just fill out a form and then you start working. Um, so I'll just go over quickly our editorial process. Um, so similarly, um, section editors will send out pitches for articles and then they'll also send visual requests to our visual editors who will send out their pitches at the same time. And then, so after the articles are written later in the week, um, the section editor will go through, they'll edit them, they'll work with the writer. Um, and then after that, they submit them to me or Maya, our deputy senior copy editor this year. And then, so they go through what we call senior copy edits, where we do substantive edits. We make sure that everything's flowing, that it makes sense. If there's any like questions or like issues with the article, that's where they'd be flagged. Um, and then after that, they are sent to copy editing and they go through two rounds of copy editors. And then they go through Abnol, our editor in chief, and then they go through me and Maya again for proofreading. Um, so we have design, sorry, we have production both days of the weekend. Um, so we do different sections on different days, but it's kind of like the full run, and then we just send out everything collectively on Sunday. Um, so for experience wise, we're not looking for anything. We're happy to take you guys in. Um, it is really a learning experience. Um, just want you to be eager, happy to write. Um, if you're looking to get involved, you can also pitch stuff too, which is really easy. Um, you just have an idea. Maybe you have a couple of sources you pull together. Um, so you want to send that to a section editor. If you're not sure who you want to send it to, you can also ask. Maybe they can suggest. Um, and they can also point you towards people to interview, that kind of thing. Um, we are looking for like new perspectives, places where our coverage is lacking. Um, and we also are looking for things with a strong U of T connection um, because these are things that other major outlets aren't covering. So we are the first people on the ground. Um, so when I'm editing articles, so the first thing I do is I go through and I give it a very thorough read, kind of as like the most critical reader. Um, I ask any questions I have, maybe there's something that's missing that needs more context. Um, and then I kind of take a step back and I look at the big thing and I kind of think of the structure. Um, so things like the inverted pyramid structure, which um, the media mentioned, the news article, maybe like everything is making sense. Can we sort this into subsections, that kind of stuff. Um, the best advice I can give would be probably to get involved, but also to get as involved as you can. Um, I know I spent two years um, just coming in as a regular contributor before I started running in elections and getting really involved. And that was when I started to learn a lot more than I ever thought I would have. Um, and it's also a great way to be part of the community. Um, and then if you're looking for how to improve your writing and stuff like that, the best thing is always to ask for feedback. Um, sometimes we can get caught up, but we are always help, happy to help and talk and help you improve. If there's any questions, always reach out. And that's, I think that's it. Thank you. Uh, I think our last presentation for today, last but not least, is the Trinity Times. Hi, uh, so my name is Mila. I'm the co-editor in chief of the Trinity Times. And we are, I believe, out of the three publications today here, the youngest publication. We were just founded over the summer. Uh, so so we are a student-run newspaper of Trinity College um, at U of T. Our mission is to be a journalistic outlet for the college community, as well as showcase a variety of voices, especially those not traditionally included within the Trinity College conversation and U of T conversation at large. Um, this summer has showed us um, that there are a lot of uh, dormant voices that need to be heard, and the, our paper was sort of um, founded in response to that. So uh, we have five different sections. We have arts and culture, features and op-eds, uh, science, trend news, and news. So the difference between trend news and news is trend news is more focused on the Trinity College community. 
um, especially during the times of this pandemic, I feel like it is very important to really um, uh, to really remember where we come from and keep a sort of communal spirit together, whereas news is focused on U of T and Toronto um, at large. So, uh, however, despite this, we do accept submissions from all sorts of uh, different um, individuals. You don't have to be affiliated with Trinity College whatsoever um, in order to write for us. So we welcome uh, each and every one um, of you. And yeah, we really, we really want to focus on diverse voices, diverse opinions, anyone that is having trouble really finding their niche at U of T, please come to us. We will try to um, help you. We will try to um, work with you and uh, publish uh, whatever pieces you have. Um, so uh, the way that our publication works is we have, I feel like we have a more sort of intimate working environment as opposed to other ones, just because we are smaller and we did start just, um, we are just starting up. So we have our two co-editors-in-chief, myself and my partner, Sai. Then we have section editors who come up with pitches and who come up with themes. Um, and then we have associate editors for each section. So the first round of editing is you go through the associate editors, then you go through the section editors, and then Sai and I give it um, a last look over to, yeah, to just um, ensure that everything is all right. And yeah, that is, um, uh, we also have, you can either contribute to us by uh, sending us pitches to our email, trendtimes at gmail.com, or you can become a part of our regular staff, in which case you will have first dibs on um, any article pitches, um, and you, but you will be required to commit um, at least one article a month, because we do publish monthly, um, and we, so we are going to open up our submission call tomorrow for the October issue, and we just had our paper launch, our newspaper launch um, uh, over the past week. So that was very exciting. I also have Josh, who is the section editor for Arts and Culture joining us today. So if he just wants to go over his uh, specific editing process and what he expects um, out of the writers in his section, um, that would, I think, be great. Hi, everyone. Um, as Mila said, my name is Josh, and I'm the Senior Arts and Culture Editor for the Trinity Times. So I'll just tell you a bit about my section so you can get an idea of what a, one of the sections are at the Trinity Times. So I'm the Arts and Culture Editor, and um, we typically focus on arts and culture events within Trinity, also at the um, university level and outside in the wider Toronto community as well. So if you take a look at our website, tridentimes.ca, we have a wide variety of articles in my section, including we've done, um, we have a column called Toronto by Neighborhood, where we're focusing on spotlighting a different community in Toronto um, that would be of interest perhaps to students um, and highlighting different restaurants, um, shops, parks, and all that in that neighborhood. Um, we also feature a theater section. Um, we're planning to start a review section for museums, film, television. Um, and our editing process, as Mila hinted, um, is pretty similar to the other section. So I have two section editors, um, and I'm the senior editor. So how it works is that when you submit your um, article, it will first be looked at by one of the associate editors who will look through it for some detailed edits and big um, constructive stuff and maybe send it back to you and give you some suggestions of perhaps who you should seek out if you should get another interview, structural things that you could tweak. Then after that, you'll do your round of edits and send it back for the second round of edits. And that will be done by me. And I'm looking for more of the smaller stuff. And then finally, it's um, finned, as I say, and that finally, then it goes off to the editors in chief, Mila and Sai who then um, finalize it and publish it on our website. So as Mila said, um, our next online issue is coming out in mid-October and you'll start seeing pitches starting tomorrow in the coming weeks. So I'm looking forward to working with all of you if you're interested in joining. Thank you guys so much. There we go. Uh, great, thank you for sharing. Um, so the next part of our of our event today will be uh, a discussion 
Um, so if you have a question uh, that you want to ask uh, the panelists, uh, you can write it in the chat or you can raise your hand or you can uh, turn off your camera or just do something to, to indicate that you have a question and we'll make sure that your question will be answered. Um, just starting off, and this is this anyone could uh, answer this question. Uh, a couple of the newspapers uh, referred to the inverted pyramid structure. Uh, and as someone who only has a, a sort of passing acquaintance with uh, student journalism, I don't know what that is. So uh, could someone just quickly explain uh, what the inverted pyramid structure is and how, how it works um, for anyone who doesn't know, like me? <laughs> Um, so it's basically the idea that with news articles, you want the most important information at the very top and the least important at the bottom. Um, so you go through that section and then it kind of gets less crappy. Kind of. mm. Okay, so it's like you have all the good, you have all the good stuff at the top and then you kind of elaborate as you go further down into it. Okay, great. Um, now this is also a a very sort of open-ended question uh, and one that I thought about during the presentations is there's a lot of different sections that you can write for as a student journalist. You can write for an art section, you can write for a news section, comment, uh, sports or science. Uh, and I wonder what what's the difference between writing these sections? Because you're talking about uh, very different things. Uh, so like you know, differences in like how the articles may be written or differences in how you prepare to write an article, maybe differences in pitching um, for, for just the variety of different things that you write for. Sorry, could um, you? I think. Oh, oh go oh, ahead. Sorry, go, go ahead, ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead, it's fine, no problem. Um, okay, thank you. Um, I think I can uh, sort of speak to that. So one of the things that I know uh, we have been um, working through a lot is the di really difference between, say, like our um, news section and our features and op-eds. So for instance, a features and op-eds tends to be more, um, have more soft news in it. And I feel like the article tone can be more informal and conversational, whereas news would have to be more formal, straight to the point, um, mostly just factual. There's really close to zero of your own opinion um, going on. So yeah, that is, I hope that um, answers part of it. If you need me to clarify the question a bit more, um, <laughs> I can do it or we can move on. Uh, she answered it perfectly. <laughs> okay, uh, sorry, I'm very old-fashioned. I have all of them written down like this. <laughs> um, uh, this is just to everyone generally. Um, what is your favorite part about being an editor at a student newspaper? And what is your least favorite part about being an editor at a student newspaper? And this could be in the capacity of your role, or it could be in, I don't know, maybe the limitations of location. It's very open-ended. Um, yeah. Um, I can go first. Okay, so my favorite part is probably being able to work more hands-on than I would anywhere else. Um, get to edit articles, get to kind of run production, everything, which is really great. Um, my least favorite part would probably be long hours. <laughs> Uh, I'd say my favorite part is, I think the the work environment because because we are students uh, and we're all young. There's kind of like a, an energy to the workplace um, that I haven't been able to find anywhere else. Uh, we kind of get to carve out our own way of doing things, um, and it's always fun. Everyone's everyone becomes friends by let, let's say the end of the first week um, because we're all working together and trying to to basically slay a dragon and like do something very difficult on top of schoolwork and extracurriculars and stuff. So I think the, the, the energy of the place is what I like the most.
happened. Oh, I'm unmuted now, sorry. Uh, we just got a question from uh, Rue. Uh, what advice would you give to someone, uh, would you give someone uh, to someone who's just entered the journalism community as a writer? Also, what resources would you recommend for beginners? I can start this one off. Um, I'd say that um, I I totally get where you're coming from. Um, when I was a first year, I had no journalism experience from high school. Um, so I just signed myself up and that's what I would suggest you do. Um, I think uh, whichever paper you want to contribute to, the masthead is going to be more than welcoming to you. So um, just find the contact information on our website and then send us an, send anyone on the masthead an email, um, telling them what you're interested in, um, any questions that you have, um, and then we can send you like direct resources on, on writing style. Uh, we follow the Canadian press style guide, so we can send you that. Um, but really, I'd suggest going for it. Um, there's, as student journalists, it's just writing. So uh, once you have a topic that you're interested in, um, you're going to be working with your editor very closely, so they'll be mentoring you that way. Um, and then, and then, yeah, it'll it'll come very naturally. It's a pretty streamlined process, so just reach out. I'd suggest. I'll add just in addition to what Paula said that um, there's this great resource that I found online a few years ago. Um, it's called JSource, the Canadian um, Journalism Project. And it's basically a network, I believe, of different um, university publications, and there are lots of resources there. And if you sign up for the mailing list, I know they have some great um, panels and all that with professional journalists, so that may be something that you may be interested in. Uh, if I could add to the resources, um, I'd say obviously writing is a huge part of, of being a journalist uh, and working for a newspaper. So uh, the first thing would be to read as much as you can. Um, read newspapers from, read, read a bunch of different newspapers, read your campus newspaper, uh, get to know the style and the, the way the writing's done, uh, because I'd say it's pretty specific. And then in terms of just helping yourself become a better writer and editor, uh, two books I swear by. Uh, the first one is The Elements of Style, by William Strunk. And the second one is The Copy Editor's Handbook by Amy, Amy, uh, I forget her last name, but The Copy Editor's Handbook by Amy something. If you Google it, it'll pop up. It's very famous. Um, those two books I read often and they really help me become a good editor, which I think is an important part of being a good writer. Oh yeah, I'll totally type them into the group chat. I think, yeah, just building on what everyone else said, just getting as much practice as you can um, really goes a long way. There's also, I know UFC has editing classes. I've taken a couple. They're really good. Uh, yeah, um, I guess, again, like, I'm just going to add pretty much harp on what everyone else has said. Um, write widely, I'd say. Write for different sections. Write about different topics that you perhaps would not have written uh, previously. I think that that really opens a lot uh, different perspective and it really just makes you a better writer in general. So, yeah. Great. Thank you, guys. Um, I, this is a perhaps a very existential question uh, and maybe and maybe it feels like a an obvious one or maybe not so much of an obvious one. I don't know where I'm going, <laughs> but this, but why does student journalism matter uh, both in like the context of like the campus or in the wider in the wider world? What what is important about student journalism and why should we be writing it? Why should we be reading it? Um, I'd say that 
student journalism is a lot like local journalism and why local journalism matters. So a lot of the bigger kind of journalism chains um, or outlets, they don't, they can't cover the nuance that student journalists and local journalists can cover. Um, and also because we're in university right now, a lot of the issues that matter to us might not also be picked up by um, bigger outlets. So I think that's why student journalism matters. It's also a learning environment for us. Um, I don't know if any of us really know what we're doing. So it's kind of um, an, a learning environment and an office space where there's a huge learning curve like every week for us. And, um, and I think, so participating it Participating in it um, is important for us to grow as journalists, I think, for people who want to go into the journalism industry, um, but also for readers. I think it's important because, um, I mean, the nature of our job is just inform people. And I think um, student journalism is integral to informing students because I don't think that other publications and other outlets, uh, like I said, can cover um, things that matter to us with as much detail and nuance. And I think adding on to that, the Campus Newspaper Act is sort of a history book, um, which I think is the most fascinating part of it. Uh, we've been around, the medium's been around since the late 60s, I believe. And if you, you can go back online to the archive and you can read through uh, the news section and the comments section, and you can see people's opinions about things that, that are going on, uh, policies that are being passed, um, past student politicians who are doing something corrupt or being assholes or something. Um, it's all there for us to read about and understand and it just sheds a lot of light on what the campus has been like and sort of what's informed the present, which I think is very cool. Yeah, building on that, I think it's just a really, oh sorry, someone's speaking. Okay, sorry. Um, I think it's just a really great place to share your voice. Um, it's also, um, like Paula said, it's not things other big outlets are covering. A lot of times you're the first one covering maybe that study or that thing, and we're holding institutions accountable. Which um, yeah, so I'm just, I'm not sure if I'm gonna ramble and or make sense, but um, I think it's because in university we're exposed to a lot of different people and a lot of different opinions and a lot of different viewpoints that perhaps we won't once we go into um, our wider lives and start specializing in certain areas. So people that might not go into journalism have the opportunity to write and write widely in university. So I feel like that is why student journalism is very important it's because it showcases a variety of different voices that perhaps will not have a chance to have a platform later on. So. Thank you. Um, I, I think this will be our last question before we move on. And it's a almost a perfect segue into what we'll be doing. Uh, but uh, actually, hold on, I think we, <laughs> I think we might have um, a little bit more time than I anticipated. Um, so what do you think is overdone in student journalism uh what are what are tropes that you see writers uh put in their articles or maybe uh a, a topic that is focused on a lot uh I'll start. Um, I'm a first year um, and I'm an editor, so I don't know much about university publications, but I'll talk a bit based on my experience in high school journalism. And I think it applies in university papers as well. What I've noticed is that um, sometimes writers, they rehash what is said in other news sources, um, something that you can find in, in the globe, the big major publications. and. Um, I always try to tell my writers, tell, tell the story that your readers can't get elsewhere. Because, and we should use it to our advantage that we're student journalists and we have access to people within our community 
So rather than pulling, pulling quotes um, from other news outlets, and we should be focusing on stories that only we can tell. I would say maybe making sure that you're looking at things that like from multiple perspectives, not just one, that you're kind of looking at how things are affecting different communities, um, different areas of coverage, instead of just focusing in, focusing in like the main center. Uh, what is one issue that you wish was more covered uh, on campus or off campus? I'm, I'm going to flip that question a bit. And I think I'm going to say that uh, I think the issues that are covered are pretty wide ranging. But what isn't um, what's less so is the amount of engagement that I'd say newspapers get in general, especially campus newspapers. And I think just um, Yeah, there's, there's a lack of engagement, I find. So it's not really the topics that are being written about, but just people engaging with those topics and the issues that we're trying to cover. So uh, engaging with the student body, having more readers, having more people write letters to the editor. I was when I was talking about the, uh, the archive, uh, when I was reading it from years prior, there were so many people engaging with the comment section and writing letters and writing letters and being very outspoken and very passionate about um, issues that were going on on campus. I feel like there's there's a lack of that uh, today. Okay, before we move on to the final question, which I preluded to a little earlier, I just want to make sure that we have no more questions from our audience. Uh, Got a question from Robin. Uh, can we use what we write in a portfolio? Do you mean like a portfolio to submit uh, elsewhere? Like the articles that you've written, you do you mean in that regard? Yeah, for sure, you can use. Um, yes. Um, a lot of, a lot of, if you apply to um, grad school programs or wherever, uh, they're going to ask for writing samples and you can for sure use whatever you uh, publish with us as writing samples in your portfolio. Uh, I got another question from Robin. Does each paper have an online publication? Yes, so our main publication is print, but when we publish, everything goes automatically online. And then we also have online exclusive content. Okay, I think we are going to be uh, moving into our, our final question, uh, which is um, when uh, writers are trying to work on their on their skills and are working on prompts for writing articles. What should these re what should new writers, new journalistic writers be looking for in prompts to pull from and help them uh, write an article? Um, do you mean what they should include in a pitch when they when they request an article to write? Uh, 
yeah, I, I think I think that. Um, so what we generally look for in a pitch email is in the subject line, tell us it's a pitch and tell us like in a, a few words, uh, what the topic of your, of your pitch is. Um, and then you definitely don't have to have the entire article written, uh, when you pitch us, you shouldn't. Um, so in your pitch email, it should be a short, like few paragraphs, um, just telling us what you want to write, like a brief outline of um, the research you're going to conduct, maybe the sources that you're going to interview, um, maybe a word count. Um, but yeah, it should be specific enough that you know which ed editor to pitch it to. So which section editor that email is going to be sent to. And then, of course, that editor will help you hone in what you want to exactly cover. Thank you. Um, so we're going to be moving on to the third part of, uh, of today's uh, event, which is going to be the writing prompt section. Uh, our writing prompt is very, very open-ended. Uh, we're just going to be presenting a, uh, an article, uh, well, not an article, we're going to be presenting a headline and, uh, and a lead for the headline. Uh, and uh, what we want you to do is write an article that is inspired by the headline in the lead. Uh, and we have a variety of, <laughs> of fun, wacky headlines that we have here. Um, we need to study them for a moment, uh, <laughs> reflect on them, get some ideas. Uh, and I'll give uh, a couple minutes for that, and then I'll uh, open it up and ask uh, our editors what they think of these uh, these headlines. Can we all agree that unicorn riding scooter in Fatal Crash makes no sense? Or is that just me? Is the scooter riding the unicorn? Maybe that's the question that will be answered in the article. <laughs> <laughs> and it's startup too. There's more than one unicorn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, so we've had some time to reflect on these headlines and these hooks, uh, and I'm going to read them out uh, one by one so we all get a nice broad picture of what's happening here. So our first one, starting in the top left, is Palmerston, UK's top diplomatic cat and chief mouser retires. The British Fiendline made it official in a resignation letter signed with two paws. Then we have Swiss town coated in cocoa powder after factory glitch. Um, it says in the lead, it showed particles of fine powder in Olten after the ventilation system at Lint and, oh gosh, I don't know how to pronounce that, uh, Lint, chocolate factory malfunctioned. Uh, next we have Poland accidentally invades Czech Republic in minor misunderstanding. Their foreign ministries confirmed the mix-up in which Poland's, Polish soldiers mistakenly crossed the border and stopped people on the wrong side. Both countries seem to ha have taken it all in stride, though. Uh, then we have 
Emus have been banned for bad behavior, a hotel in Australia's Outback says. We put up the sign, but we're not quite sure we're not quite sure whether they're able to read it or not. Yakara Hot Hotel Cone owner Gary Gimblet says in an Australian TV interview. And then we have, as we've already mentioned, unicorn riding scooter in fatal crash. As venture capital retreats, hot startups are also collapsing. Um, so really a wide variety of things to talk about there. Um, so I'm going to just go one by one uh, and ask our editors, how, how do we tackle these, uh, these headlines? And I'll start with Ali. So am I tackling all of these or the first one? Uh, you can pick which one you want to tackle. Sure. Um, so I'm going to go with the last one because I already dragged it. Uh, unicorn riding scooter in fatal crash. I'm assuming the unicorn riding scooter is um, a startup or, uh, yeah, uh, let, let's say, let's assume it's a startup and it's in a fatal crash as in economically it's doing bad. Um, so obviously that would be the opening of the article. Uh, you tackle exactly what's happening. And then afterwards you go into more detail about, um, give some background information of um, like what is the company involved in uh, what are the services it offers? Why is it going downhill? And then from there, you might go into a bit of the history of um, the organization. And then, yeah, add in any more fun tidbits that relate to the story. And I'd say you're done. And try and get an interview from someone. That's always good. Is that the right. answer you were looking for? I mean, we're, we're looking for any answer. That sounds very good. Beautiful. Uh, uh, next, uh, Paula, you can pick any of the of the headlines given and how would you tackle the story there? Um, I'm going to go with the Swiss town coated in cocoa powder after factory glitch one. Um, so I would begin um, by giving some background about the chocolate factory, maybe how long it's been there. Um, and then I would get right into the the malfunction. Um, of the factory, so <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so I would talk about how it happened, um, and then I would interview some people, maybe workers at the factory, and then also people who the malfunction has impacted in the in the city, um, and then maybe end it by talking about how moving forward, what the city is going to do, what the chocolate factory is going to do. Um, yeah, that's what I would do with that one. Uh, next, I'm gonna call on Megan. Uh, how would you tackle okay. any of these headlines? Um, so for Poland accidentally invades Czech Republic in minor misunderstanding, um, you'd probably wanna start with what they were doing before when they crossed the border and then probably go into details and seeing what happened, um, probably interview some people, um, if you can get a hold of someone who was there, and then probably go into um, the interaction between both countries, that they have taken it all in stride, get their perspective on each. Uh, next, uh, I'm gonna ask Mila. How would you tackle okay, can I choose the, can I choose uh, the one that Megan just did Poland yeah. accidentally invades Czech Republic it's yeah, just absolutely. amusing to me and no to no end um so I would perhaps uh, I would uh, definitely figure out the circumstances surrounding this mishap what was happening at that time what how exactly did they cross the border and at which point did they realize that they were in the wrong country because it does say that they stopped some people on the wrong side so you know, maybe get an interview with one of the people who stopped and see what their reaction is. Uh, perhaps go into the history of between Poland and the Czech Republic, um, their diplomatic relations. And yeah, I know that there have been um, a few such mishaps throughout the history. So maybe just add a few anecdotes of that in. Great. Uh, I think last but not least, uh, Joshua, how would you tackle any of the headlines? Are given. I'll take the emu one. Um, 
I read about this a while back. So um, what I think was happening was that like the emu was going into bar and disrupting the hotel guests. So what I would do is have the lead just saying that they've been banned. Then I'll put some context into kind of what led up to this ban, what were they doing, um, how they would get into this hotel in the first place. Um, then with the interview with the hotel co-owner, then perhaps you could also interview some of the hotel guests. Um, and, but most importantly, I'd love to have a photographer on the scene and just snap a picture of these two emus and put it, plaster it the top of the article. Great. So we have all these articles here and hopefully uh, everyone who's watching at home uh, is getting some ideas of, the, of how they would tackle these articles. Uh, and now this is, the, this is the opportunity where you can start thinking about how the prompt is gonna work uh, and how you would approach the article. Uh, and I'm gonna hand it over to Emily to talk about um, how the writing process should go and uh, submission and getting it reviewed. Yes. Hello. I know that I've been a silent person here, but um, yes, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Emily, um, and I am the other co-chair of the Hard House Literary and Library Committee. Um, as you can see, there are some really amazing editors here who've been giving some great advice throughout the workshop. And one of the, I guess, advantages of having them all here at once is that they can provide some advice to you based on what you write in response to the headlines that we had just shown you. Um, and by the way, all of those are real headlines that have occurred just this year. Um, so if you're you know, worried about constructing an article, imagine having to cover that. Um, so the way that this is gonna work, whether you're in the, uh, video, the Zoom video now live or whether you're playing it back at home, is that you can choose any one of the articles, uh, write up a complete version, do research, uh, follow the amazing advice of the people that we've just heard, and then email your article to us hh at hhlittenlib at gmail.com by Friday, October 2nd with the subject line student journalism article, first name, last name. And we will distribute it to some of these amazing editors so that they can give you some constructive comments. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the writing activity. Um, and I guess before we end, um, if there are any questions that lingering questions for people in the session um, or any comments that people from the session would like to make about the headlines, we'd love to hear it. Yeah, of course I can. So based off of the headlines that we had on the previous slide, and we'll, we're gonna post them on our WordPress and Facebook as well, you can write a brief article um, using the advice that you've heard today and then submit it to us at hhlittenlib at gmail.com by Friday, October 2nd to get some constructive advice on the article that you wrote based on those silly headlines. Does that make sense? You can make up the details of the article. You can research the details of the article. Um, just bring your prime journalistic skills. No problem. Are there any other questions, comments? Okay. 
Okay. Um, if there are more questions, yes, um, you can email us hhandlib at gmail.com. Um, and please follow us on social media and visit hhlitandlib.ca to keep up with our latest events. It's also where you will find the video for this event uh, and the writing prompts as well. Um, so yes, thank you to everybody who spoke um, and who represented their uh, newspapers. Um, and thank you to everybody who joined us. Thank you very much. This was great. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Yes, thank you so much. Have a great night, guys.